Ben mentioned last week about the scripture that talks about hope. And I don't know, I just felt the Lord unctioning me to go in this direction. And so hope meaning expectation. And I think today too many people are expecting the wrong things. There's too many people who don't have the right kind of hope. They have hope in the government, they have hope in mama, they have hope in daddy, they have hope in, 
and the preachers and the and the Sunday school to and then this and that they have hope and they have hope in this and then when something happens to destroy that hope then they lose all hope but I want to take just a few minutes this morning and talk to you about being a prisoner of hope a prisoner of hope I hope you're a prisoner this morning Amen. And when we think about prisoners, we think about somebody being held against their will. Somewhere they don't want to be, they're locked up for something that they've done or been accused of doing, and they're locked up. But I want to show you through the Word of God this morning, do you know that the Word of God calls us as children of God that we're prisoners of hope? And I want to give you just a little bit of insight this morning and explain that just a little bit. What is hope? It is a confident, eager expectation of something good. Zechariah 9 and 9 is where we're going to begin. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout. O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Now, this word is speaking of Jesus Christ. He is just and having salvation lowly and riding upon upon an ass and upon a colt the foal of an ass. Verse number 11. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent for thy prisoners out of the pit wherein there is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render or I will restore double unto thee. You may be seated. I said hope is a confident, eager expectation of something good. And right here, Zechariah is talking to the children of God. And he's telling them of what is going to come through Jesus Christ. We just celebrated communion. He is talking to them about Jesus Christ coming who's going to bring salvation. And then later on down here in, in verse number 11 and 12, he is talking to them and he's saying, I have brought you out. Back in those days, they would take prisoners and there was was what was called cisterns or these huge uh, vats that they had, these cisterns that would hold water. And they would put prisoners in an empty one. When it was empty and there was no water, they would take prisoners and put them down in those cisterns. So that's why he says, I have, because of the blood of thy covenant, are because of the fact that I'm in a blood covenant with you. Do you know that God is in a covenant with you? Do you know that he, we, we celebrate marriage as a covenant? Amen. But God is in a blood covenant. How is that? Because he sent his son Jesus to die. He shed his blood for our sins. And when we receive him as that sacrifice for our sin, amen, then we have received the blood of Jesus as payment for our sin. And we receive that and we become free from the power of that sin. But he said, they have taken you prisoner and I have loosed you. I have loosed you and set you free but notice verse number 12 and then he says turn I'm going to take these shoes off how about that turn you to the stronghold I've set you free how many of you know though that some people get free but they don't turn he said turn and go In other words, get away from what has held you bondage. Turn around and go back to the stronghold. We think of strongholds sometimes today, and a stronghold can be something. Other scripture, Paul writes, where where we, we take down strongholds with the power of the word of God. Yes, but that's not the stronghold he's talking about in this Old Testament. He's saying, I want you to go back to the strong tower. 
Because David said your name is a mighty and high tower and the righteous run into it and they are safe. He said, I've turned you loose. I've delivered you from the power of the enemy. I've brought you out of that broken cistern that they had you stuck down in. I've brought you out of that and I have caused you to be free. But now I need you to turn and come back to me. Go the right direction. And then he calls them prisoners of hope. In a spiritual sense, we talked about in a physical sense that it's being held against your will, but in a spiritual sense, it is a person being willingly held in the confines of a covenant between them and God. That is me being willing to allow God to do in my life what he sees fit to do, even when my flesh don't like it. I never met anybody who liked being in jail. Never met anybody who didn't want to be out, who didn't want to be free. But he says, I'm a prisoner of hope. And he needs you to turn around and come back to the strong tower or the stronghold because not only those those those. And we're going to read in just a second and I, I, about something called bulwarks. Bulwarks. We're going to read about that. But it is a strong defense. And he said, you come back. Come to me. Because in the confines of this covenant that we have, if you'll stay within the confines of this covenant that we have, it's going to be provision. It's going to be protection. It is going to be everything that you need if you stay within the confines. If you remain a prisoner of hope. At any time that door is open, you may leave any time that you want to. You can walk away from God, but you know that the word says that no man can pluck you from his hand. So, so folks who want to blame other folks for them getting out of the will of God, somebody said something about uh, uh, I, I, I struggle with all the time is out one day and in one day and out one day the old man is not dead amen struggling is part of our lives every single day the sin is not in the struggle for them they were free but their struggle was they were between and trying to figure out which way they wanted to live from day to day do I want to do this or do I want to do that well our Paul says my flesh wars against my spirit and if Paul warred with his flesh and his spirit you can rest assured that we're going to Amen. It's going to be a war and it'll be a war every day of our lives. But he said, turn and go to the stronghold. Allow me. Allow me. First, God reminds them that he's in a blood covenant. Amen. The spiritual church of God mentioned in Isaiah 26 and 1. Let's look at that. Isaiah 26 and 1. In that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. I said bulwarks. What, th what those are, they are defensive walls. Think about this scripture right here. In that day, in what day? In the day that we turn to him. Salvation, we have a strong city. We have a strong defense around us in our lives when we remain in covenant with Jesus Christ, when we stay within the confines and allow ourselves to be held by what the word says instead of just doing anything we want to do whenever we want to do it, however we want to do it. You say, I tried that. I had more trouble than I could snap my fingers at. It was one thing after another, after another, after another. Can somebody say amen? amen? But within the confines, there's peace and joy and protection. Why are we called prisoners of hope? Because we're in a covenant and he has placed walls around us. Do you know that when he brought you out and when he brought me out, there was a declaration made in the heavenlies. This one belongs to me, devil. 
this one. When you proclaim that you received Jesus Christ, there was a declaration made. And the word says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will raise a standard against him. And do you know what that means? It means a banner to declare war on him. And God don't lose. Amen. You praying for family members, keep praying for them. God don't lose. Amen. He don't lose. He don't lose. Look at somebody and say, he don't lose. He don't lose. Praise the Lord. Bulwarks. I've got a defense around me. I'm protected. Walls around us defending us from the enemy. He defends me when I feel helpless. He defends me when I feel hopeless. He defends me when the enemy comes in every which way. He is my stay and he is my hope. I am a prisoner of hope. I have allowed myself to, to allow him to fill me with his word so that when, I am, when I'm down and when... Has anybody ever not had a problem after you got saved? Well, praise the Lord. I'm glad I'm not by myself. But he's my defense when trouble comes. He's my bulwark and my stay. I'm within those confines. Amen? He holds me prisoner. I want him to hold me where I need to be. I, want, I give him permission to speak to me and tell me what I should do. And not only for me to hear it, but to obey what he says to do. We can hear the word till the cows come home, but if we don't obey what it says, it is worth nothing. It is worth nothing in our lives. It is powerless in our lives if we do not obey the word of God. Romans 8, 35. I did not give uh, Colin this, so I'm going to turn in my Bible here, I want to I wanna read this. Romans 8 and 35 says this. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Look at somebody say, I'm, a, I'm his prisoner. I'm his willing prisoner. I'm locked up. Nobody can get to me. Nobody can get to me. Nothing can harm me. For he has me covered. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. Verse number 37 says, No, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, boy, I love this, I am persuaded. Paul said, I have been up, I've been down, I've been shipwrecked, I've been snake bit, I've been all these other things. I've been through some troubled time, I've been beat and left for dead. He said, but I am persuaded that neither death or life or angels or principalities or powers or things present or things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I can't be separated from him. I could walk out on him today, turn my back and go straight to hell but I'm going to go there with his love. He loves you and he loves me. Just because we, we make mistakes and we fall, his love, we can't be separated from his love. But we can be separated from him. I want to be a prisoner of hope. Prisoner of hope. Hallelujah. Psalm 62, 1 and 2. To the chief musician, to, I can't hardly read that, and I'm not, Judithon, a psalm of David, truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him comes my salvation. Amen. He only is my rock. Ben's not my rock. He's my husband, and I love him with my whole heart and whole being. He loves me, and I know he does, but I'm not his rock. God is my rock. God is his rock. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Amen. I shall not be greatly moved. Verse number five. Hallelujah. Glory to you. My soul wait thou only upon God. For my expectation 
is from him. Do you know that word means hope? My hope comes from him. My soul, David's talking to himself right here. He did that a lot. You talk to yourself, I do. He did that a lot. He said, my soul, wait only upon God. Don't be waiting on somebody. Don't be waiting on, on whether this works out or that. If I get the job, I'll go to church and I'll serve God. If, I, if everything goes all right and I feel like it, I'll, I'll serve God. If, I, if life turns out okay, everything's going to be all right and I want everything to go smooth as glass. That's not what he said. He said, my soul, you need to wait only on God. Wait on God for my expectation is from him. I'm expecting him to answer. Are you expecting him to answer this morning? Whatever you're asking for, are, do you expect? Are you a prisoner of hope? I'm, 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 I have him as my defense. And I am held by hope. I am held by expectation. My expectation is from him. If my hope is from God, it has nothing to do with what's going on around me has nothing to do with what's going on on the inside of me. Amen? Except that I'm saved and I belong to him and I'm trusting him. But it doesn't have anything to do with my feelings. doesn't have anything to do with my bank account. doesn't have anything to do with my husband or your, your wife, your kids, your whatever, your circumstances. has nothing to do with that. My hope is in the Lord and he will bring to pass his will in my life if I stay in covenant with him if I stay a prisoner of hope amen verses 7 and 8 say he's our refuge a shelter from pursuit danger or trouble our refuge a shelter Psalms 18 and 2 says this he's my fortress the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Yes, he is. He's my fortress. He is this, I, I, I'm not susceptible to outside influence or disturbance when I'm hidden in the Lord. Amen. A fortress is a military stronghold. Can you imagine what happens in heaven when God hears one of us who belong to him cry out and say, I need you. Help me, Lord. I, I, I can't take no more. Can you imagine if you can see a military stronghold, thousands and thousands of angels being sent to come down and be a fortress around you? Why are you still here? Because God is your fortress. Why am I still here? Why am I able to stand up here and preach the word of God? Because he's my fortress. He's my shield. He's my buckler. He's my salvation. If we could realize what we have in him, we could live this life so much more victorious if we would just realize what, what good he has for us. The plans he has for us. Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, For I know the plans I have for you to prosper you, to bring you to an expected end. His plans are so much better than our ideas. So much better. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He didn't mean he was a literal prisoner, but he was willing to be obedient to the Lord, even if his flesh didn't want to I hope you're willing this morning I, I want us to think about that word for just a minute willing willing just say it to yourself willing and just ask yourself this question am I willing 
Because see, if we're not willing, God can't do anything with it. If we're not willing, he will never override man's will. It is not his will, the word says, that it is not his will that any should perish. But hell is enlarging itself every day. So what does that tell us? The will of man is what's going to keep people from being saved. He said if you'll just be willing to be a prisoner of hope. If you'll just be willing to do what I tell you to, even if you don't want to do it right then, you're going to see later on that it worked out for your good. You're going to see. How many of you have experienced enough to know that God knows best? Help me, Jesus. He knows best. You know why he knows best? Because he sees tomorrow. He sees what's coming. So he is taking you, and as long as we're prisoners of hope, as long as we're in blood covenant with him, as long as we honor the blood of Jesus in our lives, even when nobody's looking. If I honor him when I'm on my cell phone at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night when nobody knows, what I'm looking at. If I honor him when I go out down to somewhere where my buddies have asked me to come and they start drinking and smoking dope and doing doing all kind of doing whatever. If if I honor him and I get in my vehicle and say bye guys, see you later. If I honor him, he'll honor me. If I honor him, he will do everything he said he would do in my life. If you, if you honor him, if you'll stay in that blood covenant, if you will stay where he asks you to stay, he said, I'll set up a fence city around you. I will set up a defense around you from your enemies. I will set that up and I will be your defense. I'll be your buckler, your shield, your God. And I have good plans for you. I found that out. Took me a lot of years after I got saved to realize a lot of things. And I got a whole lot more to realize. But I'm so thankful. See, the more I, I, I said before, and I think I said this uh, last week, experience breeds confidence. The more you experience God's faithfulness, the more you don't question whether or not he's going to be faithful because he is. Prisoner of hope. I want you to be held and protected, fought for, loved by God, the God of hope, expectation. You know what I do when I expect something? I get ready for it. I get ready for it. You know what? I got lost loved ones I'm praying for. You know what I'm doing? I'm getting ready. I'm expecting because when this new building, this church building goes up here, I, Brother Anthony, I'm trusting for him. I'm going to see it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to see it because I'm calling his name. I'm trusting the Lord. I'm trusting. We've been praying and praying and praying and trusting God. I'm going to see it. Why? Because I'm a prisoner of hope. You know what? Sometimes it feels like my flesh wants to get out of that and say, that's just a mess. There ain't no telling that we were just talking about that. Looks like a mess. Looks like things are impossible. Looks like everything is happening but the right thing. But I can see in my mind these spiritual bars saying, just stay right here. Just stay right here. And keep expecting, keep trusting, keep believing. And I'll do what I've promised. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a mighty and strong and high tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. Would you be willing to be a prisoner of hope? A prisoner of expectation? It'll hold me when everything in me wants to doubt what's going to happen. It will hold me when everything around you is coming apart. It will hold you in place. 
How many of you have had to say it's bad right now, but I'm expecting. It's rough right now, but I'm expecting. My expectation is alive and well because I am a prisoner of hope. I'm held by the hope and the expectation. I'm protected. Do you know that sometimes in prison they lock people up to protect them against other prisoners so that nobody can come in? Sometimes what we think is, is that we're being closed in and boxed in. Well, I can't do this and I can't do that. Let me tell you something. Sometimes offense is made for protection and not for, con, con, for being confined. Sometimes there's a protection that God puts up and says, don't go outside this place because it's protection. We need to look at his word This is a hedge against the enemy. My flesh don't like to walk that out sometimes. But it's a protection and a hedge around about me. And Paul said, we don't even have time to even talk about all of Paul's journeys and everything he went through. I'm about to close. But when I think about Paul was a prisoner. He was a literal prisoner and was being carried across this sea. And a storm came. And they started throwing tackling off the ship to lighten the ship because they were afraid they were going to go down. And they started throwing things off and it wasn't getting any better, wasn't getting any better, wasn't getting any better. Paul tried to tell them before they went that he perceived that they were going to be in trouble and they didn't want to listen. They fasted for 14 days and God spoke to Paul. Thank God a man of God was on the ship. See, they thought they had him bound. But he was a prisoner of hope. He was on a mission. God had put him there. God had sent him there. They thought they were in control, but God was in control. And he said, stay on the boat. Whatever happens, stay on the boat. Look at somebody and say, stay on the boat. Whatever happens, stay on the boat. And we all know the story how that the boat ran into a, a sandbar and it broke. And the guards were going to start killing people because they were afraid they were going to escape. And Paul said, we're all going to survive if we stay on this ship. The ship broke and some of them, the word says, jumped out. The ones who could swim jumped out and swam to shore. Some made it on planks. Some made it on boards. Some floated on pieces of the ship. But all of them survived. Just because you're a prisoner of hope, just because you're in the will of God don't mean you won't have to float on a plank. Sometimes. It don't mean that you won't have trouble. Sometimes. But you know what it does mean? You're going to make it to shore. He is your protection. Your defense. Your guide. And they got to the shore and Paul starts gathering sticks to build a fire. And all of a sudden, when he put the sticks in the fire, a serpent come out and bit him. And we won't go through the whole story, but we all know the people thought he was evil, and then when they saw he didn't die from the snake bite, then they thought he was a god. You see how fickle people are. And they were barbarians. And Paul ministered to them. 
and they were saved. Are you willing to go through something to reach somebody who's lost? Are you willing? Are you willing to reach somebody? Let them see what God does in your life. Amen? Be a witness. Be a prisoner. Prisoner of hope, expectation. Let's stand this morning.